right. Welcome everybody to my um, tenth episode of Catman Do Live. Um, okay, let me start off with a couple of things. Um, I did have this show live where everybody could see it. I did take it off my website um, so that people could, you know, so that normal people wouldn't be able to just watch it. And, well, um, it's still open to the community. If people are friends of mine on Facebook and they can see, you know, the link, they can click on it and watch it. Now, with that being said, I want to give a warning to anybody who may be out there that is not a face or body painter. Um, a lot of what I say has to do with the face and body painting community. I don't want you to take it as a negative. I want you to take it as a positive. These are things that we have issues with in our community and that if you're watching this as an outsider of the face and body painting community, you will learn a little bit about it and stuff. Um, there are major issues that go on on Facebook and real life um, all over the place and stuff. So, you know, um, please keep in mind that we do try to stay and remain as professional as possible, but, you know, at, at times we're human. We're, we're going to make mistakes, and you just have to understand that. All right, with that being said, there is going to be talk tonight on this show about nudity and pornography and art, um, the differences between them, and how they relate to body art, which, yes, you do see some, well, I'll get into that later, okay? Um... First off, uh, I do want to share a little story with you. Now, um, a little while back, I did get a, uh, I, I posted a message on uh, Silly Farm. I was, saw this post that they had about, you know, shirts and everything like that, that they had um, made for face painters. And, you know, they had jewels on them and stuff, and it was really neat. And I was like... Where are the male outfits? Where are the male shirts? The male, you know, stuff? Because there are a lot of male face painters, and um, they're mainly supplying to a more female base. Well, um, I was told that there are male items on there. Not a lot, you know, but there are. Uh, the majority of people that go to Silly Farm and order from them are mostly female. So, you know, that's understandable, but um, being an open company like that, Maybe they should. Well, uh, just the other day, I went to go check my mailbox, and uh, I received a package, and um, there was a card inside. So I'm going to read you the card real quick. It says, Hi, Daniel. Our vendor sent us this shirt by mistake. Um, Heather mentioned you had said you needed to, we needed to have shirts for men. So she thought it would be nice to send you send this to you. Um, have a great day and enjoy Heather and Claudia from Silly Farm. All right. So that being said, I really appreciate the thought. I really do. Um, if Heather Green's watching this, thank you very much. If Claudia is watching this, thank you very much. If you're not, hopefully somebody will spread the word, and um, I'll post this on uh, Fabaic. Uh, hopefully she'll see it there. Um, so. As with all my videos, I do download them and upload them to my YouTube account so that uh, if you cannot see this on a mobile device, you'll be able to see it off of YouTube on your mobile device later. So, this is the shirt they sent me. Okay, nice blue, extra large uh, male shirt, and it has face painter and jewels on it. Uh, now, I'm not a jewel fanatic. I do appreciate the thought, and this mistake is going to benefit one viewer of my show tonight. Um, I am going to ask a question later, once I think of a really good question, trivia question, and the first person to give the correct answer, as you might have seen on uh, you know, Faba TV's live shows when they do their little contest, will receive this shirt. I will mail it to them personally. Maybe I'll add something extra into the package. But 
I will be asking a question later on the show, and the first person to get it right in the chat or call me up and give me the answer will receive this shirt. So, you can easily call me. If you're watching live, you can call me at the number on the screen. Um, if you're watching this in a replay, sorry, the shirt's already been given away. So, <laughs> um, so let me just uh, go down here. All right. Now, let me think. What to start off with? Uh, should I start off with the body art or the body painting as art or nudity? Or should I um, start off with, you know, the problems that we have within Facebook groups in our community itself? I think I'm going to start off with the um, body art nudity. And hold on a second. I'm going to close my door real quick. Max, get inside. Come on. Don't need to have the outside uh, world. I, I usually keep my doors open during the summer to save on electricity by not running air. Uh, but there are people outside moving out of their uh, townhouse, so uh, they don't need to hear what I'm saying or, you know, start yelling and screaming and being nuisance, which they oftentimes try to do. So... Um, I guess I'll go on to the body painting as art or nudity. There is a big, big problem on Facebook right now with people reporting body paintings as nudity or pornography. Why? And here's the biggest problem I see, and the reason I'm bringing this up is because it just happened today. A fellow body painter in a body painting group had one of his body paintings that was edited flagged for nudity or pornography. Does that make sense? Who is trolling these groups and reporting other face and body painters? We really, and that's why I'm going to also get into the problems with the groups on Facebook. But here's the thing. There is a clear line between art and nudity. Okay? Pornography, we know, is man-on-man, -man, you know, penises showing, squirting stuff on girls, this and that, very blatant, and it's just awful, okay? I mean, if you want to do that, do it with your girlfriend at home, do it with your wife at home, uh, do whatever you want at home, but you don't need to be posting it online, you know? That's nudity and pornography when you show a naked body with the intent for sexual um, connotations, Okay, art is completely different. If we're using the body as a human canvas, then we are essentially painting the entire body. We're not looking at the body as anything sensual or sexual. Correction, some do. But the majority of us, even I myself, I have made the mistake of accidentally grabbing a wrong part to move the person and they'll, you know, do a little cough and I'll, oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. The body to me is nothing more than a canvas for me to paint on. The work that I do is considered art. This is not just doing a Jackson Pollock on somebody and saying, hey, this is art. <coughs> this is actually thought out, planned out, most of the time, mine's spontaneous, but most of the time it's thought out and planned out and put down in a way that follows the contours of the body to create art, not pornography. I don't see, um, well, I do, but, I mean, I guess i got to put it in all kinds of different ways. You do see people um, painted in sexual or provocative positions. It's also still art. Look at it. Look at the contrast of the photo. Look at the lighting of it. Look at how it is meant to be portrayed and then decide whether it is art or pornography. Most of the time it's going to be art. 
I mean, look at the biggest problem we had with the statue of David. There's a lot of people on one side saying, oh, look, it doesn't need to have the penis. The other side says, well, you know, it's art. It can be there. But the fact of the matter is, it's art. It's been around for centuries. Why would you want to change it now by taking something off that was there originally and that males have? Period. Okay? Here's the other problem I see. It's not the boobs that everybody has a problem with. It's the nipples. That's why we have nipple covers when we do body paintings. Why is it that the female nipples are so offensive to people, yet the male nipples aren't? You want to hear something that's very interesting? According to medical professionals and scientists, that when we are conceived, that before we even become male or female, we are both. Okay? And technically, men have nipples for the simple fact that they are undeveloped female memory glands. At one point in the body, the reason we have nipples is because we became man and we didn't need to produce milk, so we have the nipples, but they really have no function on the body. Okay? So technically, they're a vestigial nipple due to evolution that causes us to still have them but it doesn't make a difference but the thing is it's not the oversized mammary glands that are the sexual part of the body on a female it's the nipple so we have to cover up the nipple in order to have you know it okay that makes no sense to me that is really downright stupid you know and if anybody brings up the fact that it's a religious thing Bull, look back in history, almost 2,000 years, and you will see some paintings of nudes that are there. And they're painted by Christians. They're painted by Muslims, Buddhists. Everybody has created pictures, sculptures, and stuff. The Venus de Milo is naked without arms. She's showing nipples. It's ridiculous, okay? So the fact of the matter is, when a body is painted up in a certain way with the intent to make it art, it is art. If you see a video on YouTube of a naked girl squirting paint on herself and moaning, of course, that's pornography. But when you see artwork, when we actually post it up online, most of the time it's with a black or white background or some kind of colored background, just usually solid, and you see a body in front of it that's painted, that's not pornography, that's art. Alright? So, if you have a bug up your butt, and you feel like you need to report these pictures, and you're part of a body painting group, you are an idiot. Flat out, plain idiot. Here's the other thing that I don't understand, okay? If you don't want to see it, why are you looking for it? Because obviously, if you're reporting it, you're looking for it. If it shows up on your timeline and you report it, it actually gives you an option at the end of the reporting to block that individual. Now, if you block that individual, you can no longer see what they post, so it cannot offend you anymore, right? Unfortunately, a lot of these people out there that are reporting do not block the individual, and therefore, they make it their mission to report everything and get that person blocked for anywhere from 24 hours to 45 days on Facebook from posting anything or even being able to be on Facebook in the first place. What gives them the right to do that? It doesn't. You know, you can make the freedom of speech um, thing all you want. You, you can preach that. It doesn't matter. The internet is global. It's not... American. It's not United States only. So therefore, your freedom of speech is thrown out the window. Get rid of the Constitution on that because that's complete and utter BS. All right? Now, yes, we're all able to say what we want, how we want to. It, we deal with the repercussions of what we do, but the thing is, if we're trying to show our art, there's no reason that a butthurt individual should be reporting us. 
You can block us. You can hide that um, post so you don't see it anymore. You can unsubscribe from that individual if you're friends with them. You can do plenty of different things other than reporting. But if it actually harms you physically and mentally, please contact me and let me know. <coughs> I would like to find out how this art actually harms you in any way because I find it complete and utter BS you know so the thing is yes body painting is nudity but it is art nudity is it pornography no is it used in pornography yes is it still art yes but the fact of the matter is most of what is being reported on face and body artist pages and their profiles and in groups is art okay I painted a bikini on a girl you can't tell whether it's real or not it looks like a person actually wearing a bikini that you have seen plenty of times on Facebook yet somebody reported it as being nudity and pornography how hard, even on a computer, do you have to pull out a magnifying glass and look and say, oh, it's a pubic hair, we must report it. How hard up are you to control the internet that much? It boggles my mind. Okay, Body painting is art. It is not nudity and pornography in the sense that it violates Facebook terms of service. It is not that way. In fact, I have created a group for body artists to post their uncensored pictures. It is a closed group. You can ask to join it if you want. But be careful because if you are found to be reporting people, you will be reported yourself. You will also probably be blocked by tons of people. You will also have a lot of hate sent your way if you report people. If you do not like the page and you find it, the group, walk away, scroll away from it, ignore it, turn your head. If I have to do it with certain religions, you can do it with our art. Okay? It's called tolerance. And there are tons of intolerant, ignorant people out there about art pick up a dictionary google okay there are plenty of documentations out there that'll let you know about these things if you have anything to add and you're watching this show right now and you want to give me a call call the number on the screen I'll be happy to talk with you live on the air on to my next uh, god that's a lot that I got and in less than 20 minutes next issue I have Facebook groups there are so many Facebook groups out there okay there is and uh, Marcella Mama Clown Murad who is the co-founder or founder of the Face and Body Art International Convention, which I have gone to three times already. Even mentioned, she is a part of almost every Facebook group that has to do with face and body painting that is known. Um, everything from beginner to intermediate to advanced, um, children and adults, tutorials and this and that on butterflies, masks, superheroes, zombies, monsters, every little thing. I mean, there are so many groups out there. When somebody creates a new group that is specifically made for a certain topic, why do people feel the need to go in there and try to control how that group is run? If a person made the group for a certain purpose, okay, such as face and body painting in a certain area, like uh, the Oregon face and body artists. Okay, It's specifically set up for face and body artists in the Oregon state to display their work and talk about things and issues in their state. Understandable. 
Unfortunately, this is also a place that a friend of mine who is from Oregon and part of that group had one of his photos flagged for nudity and pornography. If you go to a group just to complain, you don't need to be a part of that group. You are there to incite emotion and reactions from people in a negative way. It's called trolling. And we have enough trolls on the internet. We don't need any more in our groups. Okay? I have created about six or seven groups. Um, I run five of them right now, five or six right now. Um, I'm a part of several others. Okay? I don't go into those groups and tell them how to run them. I don't go into their groups and tell them, well, I don't, I don't agree with that rule and you should change it. <coughs> that person who created that group made it with what they had in mind. Good example. I created the group, Face and Body Painters, pushing it to the limits. The main purpose of this group is to have young, fresh, serious face and body painters come into the group, share what they have done recently, have us critique it, whether it is harsh or nice or whatever. Take what they have learned from the other people who have knowledge in the group. Do that over again or do a similar piece using what they have learned from the critiques and then display that photo to show how much they have grown over that time, what they have learned, and if critiques are needed, more to be added. This is a place for people to get better and push themselves to the limits of their abilities. This is not a place to post your random photos of what you did last week or yesterday and say, hey guys, how do you like this? So that your ego gets boosted. It's not that. This is a place to help out other artists. This is not a place to post to boost your ego. Okay? I want people... And this may sound egotistical. I want people to be better than me. I want to find artists who are greater than me who are just starting out. I want people who can develop over time faster than I have in 12 years. Like uh, Beck Star Anthony, who is a makeup artist in uh, Queensland, I think it's Queensland, Australia. In two and a half years, she surpassed most of my friends and her abilities to go from face painting to body painting. She has done incredible work. She is an awesome artist. Okay? I'm still striving to get to her ability that she's done in a quarter of the time that I've been around doing it. I want to help out individuals. I am not in it for myself. If I was, I wouldn't be creating these groups to help out other people. And if you consider what I say to be bullying, then you don't need to be there in the first place in my group. For the simple fact is, we do not pander to the sensitivity of others when it comes to trying to develop their skills. You want to be better? We will make you better. We will help you out in any way possible. If you ignore what we have to say and you keep posting work that's not you know, um, taking anything we say uh, and applying it, you're just wasting our time. There are other groups out there. There are hundreds of other groups out there in Facebook you could be a part of to get um, your ego boosted, to, you know, um, have your feelings lifted up in work that we think could be better. It's not just new people that are in my group. There are professionals there. They agree with what I say. They may not voice it as much as I do, but I am a very blunt person. I go out of my way for you guys. I don't appreciate it when I get told that I'm doing something wrong or what I say is offensive to you. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen to it. You can leave. You can turn the video off. <coughs> um... People just feel butt hurt most of the times, and they need to stop. Uh, let me see. 
Exactly. Um, Chelly Rose in the chat room said, Busy bodies have too much time on their hands and look for things to complain about. Yes, they do. I have a lot of time on my hands. What do I do with it? I update my website. I make sure that all the different social networks I'm a part of are updated. I go to all the entertainment websites that I'm a part of and update them. Make sure they're all okay. I'm constantly looking for other local festivals and events to be a part of. Um, outside of my area of festivals and events to be part of. But I also try not to step on the toes of other face painters that may be in the area. And I have told people that before. It's not about me making money. It's about me making the people happy. Okay? And yes, I have been in areas where there are other face painters that complain about me um, doing a festival in their area that they could have done but they have never stepped up to the plate and actually got an application for the festival. They have never stepped out of their box to actually do anything. That is not my problem. I give them the opportunity to take it if they need to and to be a part of that festival. I tell them, fill out an application next year. I'm going to too. Set up next to me. Set up with me. You know, Let's help each other out. They don't do that. They talk behind your back most of the time. This needs to stop in the face of body painting community. We need to stop going against each other and helping each other out. There are great guilds like one down in Orlando, Florida that uh, Mandy Eileen Schiff um, uh, is a part of, uh, along with Jay Bautista and Nick Herrera and a whole, uh, Della Morta, uh, Josh Mohawk. Uh, there's a whole bunch of people that are involved in this. Tracy Purple, I can't forget you. Can't forget you. Um, there's a lot of people who know that the body art is there and there's enough business for everybody to go around because we can't get everybody okay, by ourselves. So instead of fighting with each other over gigs and everything else and you know talking behind each other's backs, why don't you stop the bickering and start helping each other? That's pretty much what's going wrong with our country in the first place and how the economy is going down because everybody's thinking for themselves and not about what's good for the whole. I'm sorry, I don't want to make this live show into a rant the whole time. I really don't. Um, phone number's on the screen. If you want to call me, you got something nice to say, um, go ahead. I mean, I, I need something uplifting to talk about. Post something in the chat. Give me a suggestion. I need to get off this rant. I need to get out of this negative mood. Um, I want to be helpful for you guys. I, I want you to understand... There are plenty of groups out there. I'm having to approve posts in my group because people are not reading what I put on the actual group. I pinned some information to the top of the group that says only post one picture, get critiques about it, post your next picture after you have uh, taken what you have learned from those critiques and made it better. I've approved post that showed a before and after that's great because you can see how much they change and if there's something that needs to be fixed we'll let them know and they fix it people appreciate this but then I get complaints about it so I disprove uh, disapprove those comments if you have a problem with something personal message me okay <laughs> which do I prefer strawberry twizzlers or cherry cherry most definitely cherry okay so as I mentioned at the beginning of the show yes I got this shirt it was a mistake sent to uh, Heather at Silly Farm and uh, since I did mention that they didn't have much in the way of male uh, shirts and everything on their uh, Silly Farm website, uh, she decided to send the mistake to me. Well, this mistake is going to benefit one of the viewers here today. Um, as I only have four viewers, the first person to comment the answer to this question, which I have no idea what the question is, <laughs> will receive this shirt. Um, Message me on Facebook or email me at catmanduefba.com um, if you're the winner. Or 
Let me just get to the question. Who was the winner of the sponge and brush category of the World Body Painting Festival this year? Answer in the comments below. You can call me up and give me the answer. Whichever comes first will win this shirt. It is an extra large blue face painter shirt and it does have gems on it. It says face painter. It's really great. All right. I'll give you to the end of the show to give you the answer. And I'm getting really sick and tired of this fly messing with my oh come on Shelly no I'm not gonna ask anything about tigers or doing or anything how they're doing it's a very simple 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 question that I asked and it's a very simple answer because if you're on Face and body art, or the face of uh, the Fabiac Forum, Fabiac Forum. The question is, who won first place in the sponge and brush category of the World Body Painting Festival in Austria this year? It was just this past weekend, and there's a lot of first place winners, but I want the one for sponge and brush category uh, Madeline Greco from Living Canvas um, or what is it Living Art I think it's Living Canvas one of those Foxy Boxy one again for um, first place in the airbrush category this is her third time winning in the same category three years in a row so uh, uh, 30 minutes to go and I have nothing to talk about I've already gone through two issues and stuff I probably could have gone into depth with them but uh, So I'm going to post a question in the chat box down here. Never mind. Uh, as I was typing, an answer was given. And Artsy Nanny got it right. Arfanati Matteo, or Matteo Arfanati, from Italy was first place with a piece. Uh, I wish I could show it on the screen, but unfortunately my technology is not that great and it doesn't show up, you know, in the replays. So, um... Artsy, you can uh, email uh, email your address to catmandu fba at gmx.com and I will get this out to you probably either tomorrow or Friday. You should receive it. Um, depending on where you're from, <laughs> should receive it either next week or the following week. So, um, maybe I'll have some more contests going on throughout my live shows. I know, uh, the Fabiac Forum has lots of contests that they do and send out things. Um, make sure that when you receive this, Artsy Nani, 
Um, make sure that you thank Heather Green for the shirt. Not just me. Uh, Silly Farm was the one that supplied it to me. Uh, it's uh, too large for me or my girlfriend to wear, so I decided to give it away as a prize. I hope you like it. If you like the shirts, um, you can go to Silly Farm and order them from there. They have all different styles and colors to choose from. So go to sillyfarm.com and check that out. Um, Miss Melissa, you were talking about festivals earlier. How do new painters find festivals in their area? Um, yeah, I'll do a contest for some Twizzlers. Uh, I'll, I'll send you a Twizzlers gift certificate next week uh, as a prize. Or maybe I'll just send you a gift certificate, Chelly. <laughs> Contact me with your information. Um, <coughs> uh, festivals. As far as being a new person to the face and body art community, um, get with your chamber of commerce and get with any um, local business, nonprofit organizations that are in your city. Uh, like here in Bristol, Virginia, we have um, Believe in Bristol, which helps out the small businesses in the downtown area uh, get promoted with events and all kinds of things. Um, there are probably some more nonprofit, business-oriented organizations like that in your town or city. Uh, check out those. Check out your chamber of commerce. Uh, go by uh, your local churches and find out if they have any events going on. Go by your local schools and ask them um, what kind of events they have going on. Uh, if you want to know about festivals, there's a great um, festival network that you can get onto. I hope um, farmers markets are okay. Uh, I don't expect to make a lot of money at farmers markets. Uh, it's a great way. I would probably do it um, instead of charging. I would do that for tips and hand out business cards. Um, uh, let me think. There are. Uh, you can go by restaurants and see if you could do it for tips to start off with. Uh, most of the time, if you're going to do restaurants and stuff, it's best to have a contract with them and, you know, have them pay you for your time. Um, because if you do it for tips, there might be the wait staff that are at that restaurant that are complaining that they're not getting big tips because you are instead. And that's happened to a friend of mine in this area. Um, Work out a contract-based deal. Try not to charge them too much, but make sure that, you know, it's during uh, off time of the week that you can do it um, so that it's not interfering with uh, your weekends where you mainly have parties and festivals and everything else going on. Uh, there are so many places you can go to find out about festivals. Um Typing in uh, Google festivals in your state or in your city and see what pops up. There's a lot that won't show up because not everybody posts everything online. Um, like if I want to find out about an event, I can check my local newspaper and find more on there than I can on their website. Because um, they require people to list it on their website um, separately from being listed in the newspaper. So, festivals.com is a good one. There's the Festival News Network, um, FFN, or FNN, I mean. Um, there's plenty of different places. I've done festivals everywhere from uh, Louisiana, Mobile, uh, Pensacola, Florida, Panama City Beach, um, all up and down the East Coast. I've done events in uh, Georgia. Um, Connecticut, New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, I go everywhere. But I also um, try to make sure that I find out who the face painters are in the area. A uh, good example, I was down in Mint Hill, North Carolina. Contacted them, asked them if I was going to be the only face painter there. And this was, I think, four years ago. Asked them if I was going to be the only face painter there. Um... They said yes, except for a nonprofit organization that was only going to do it for one day, and if I minded, I said no. They lied to me. 
This is a rain or shine event. They shut it down the first day because of rain. <coughs> Found out there was eight of us there at that event. And I was the last one. I was the very last face painter. So by the time anybody got down to me, they already went through seven other face painters. Is that fair to me? No. The flow of the um, festival was wrong. Um, nobody did any good. But then there are events like this past 4th of July where there was five of us. Uh, me and my former business partner both have the highest prices. We had lines all night long. Then there were some other people that were painting, and um, I won't get into them. Uh, they know who they are and what they were doing wrong. Uh, one was doing it for three and five. She's a very beginner face painter, but at least she's using the right products. The other ones weren't. So uh, if they're watching this and you know who you are, you can contact me and I can help you out. I'm not here to um, destroy your life. I want to help you. I want to make you better. I would rather you do it right than do it wrong. But, you know, um, if you don't listen to me, I can't be responsible for the negative reaction you get from what you do. So, uh, uh, yeah, local.com is a good website to search for festivals. Uh, stay away from Craigslist. There's too many problems with that, and half the time those are bogus anyways. If you find anything good on Craigslist, it's more of a miracle than anything else. Um, so many spammers on Craigslist. Uh, don't know where else to go from there. Um, hold on, my throat's a little dry and I'm out of my, uh, Bojangles Mountain Dew. Unofficially sponsored by Bojangles. Go out and get your spicy chicken on. So, got my water in my nice little uh, Star Wars glass with uh, Luke and Yoda and R2-D2. It's the Empire Strikes Back glass. My girlfriend's way into Star Wars. Ah, tap water, just as good as uh, bottled water, just free. So, um, what else do you guys uh, want to know? I hope I hope that answered you, uh, Melissa. Um, have any other questions for me? Got seventeen more minutes, and the phone has not rung, so you can easily call me if you want to talk live online. Uh, I'll just dance. Yeah, that's going to lose me viewers real quick. All right. Um, let me think. Boy, I can go really quick with a whole bunch of stuff in the beginning of the show, but then when it gets down to the last parts, I just kind of, I'm blah. <laughs> uh, any other questions from you guys? What What do you want to know? What Pick my brain. What would you like my help with? Specifically my help. You know, boost my ego for once. <laughs> oh. oh. I got this massive headache. We had major lightning and thunder didn't know if I was even going to have this show on I'm glad it passed by that way you know I can have this show and I wouldn't have to worry about doing another one tomorrow and trying to come up with something to talk about um, how many of you like morning glories my girlfriend planted some morning glories and they're all up and around the outside of the house and I got tons of seeds here 
Who would like some Morning Glory seeds? I'll send you a package. Then you'll have this many just after a couple of days. <laughs> so. I would like your critique on my tiger I posted in the Pushing to the Limits group. I will critique it when I'm on the group. Um, I know I said I'm going to critique all the stuff that's posted on there. Um, I've been busy with a few things, so I haven't got around to that yet. Um, I will be going through, and I'm going to start at the very bottom of the group, you know, with ones that I haven't commented on, and I'm going to comment all the way up through to the top. So um, look out for that. Um, what would I say is the norm per hour I like to see? Um... Really, if I can get at least $60 an hour, I'm good. Uh, that's what I would like to have because that's what I can normally do with the prices I charge. I can easily do four full faces, really elaborate, and, you know, an hour. And that's $15 a pop, so that's $60 an hour. Um, I would like to see $100 an hour if I could. Uh, that would be really pushing it on my skill set and limit. Um, so I'm saying anywhere from, I would say anywhere from 60 to 75, which is four to five full faces in an hour, um, that are really detailed, that really bring people in would be great. Now, if I was to do, uh, an event where, you know, they all want like tiger faces or they all want full face, you know, Spider-Man or something like that, I could knock out these faces like crazy and, you know, easily do 10 of them in an hour you know of these faces so I guess I could do about hundred and fifty dollars in an hour very easily um, because of that uh, like when I charge for certain festivals and events when they hire me um, I look at the number of hours and I usually charge a five hundred dollar flat fee for the day which is a hundred dollars an hour um, plus I uh, require that I'm allowed to have a tip bucket out so I can get tips and I do free face painting for these kids and I don't uh, I try not to get away from uh, my best work I, I try to do my best work I try to do high quality out there uh, sometimes it doesn't happen the kids are squirmy you can't help certain things uh, the weather doesn't help um, if it's moist humid you know your paints are melting your brushes aren't working right uh, you have to change out the water or something. Uh, so, uh, as far as how much I ch charge per face is, like I said, $15 for a full face, 10 for a half face, or a mask. Mask is just covering both eyes. So, if they see an eye design, which I charge $5 for, and they want it on both eyes, I'll put it on both eyes and maybe something in the middle to tie it together, and I charge them $10 for that. Um, if they want jewels or glitter on it, um, if I have poof glitter, I'll put that on. If they want liquid bling or something, I charge them five dollars for that. So you know, I add on jewels. Uh, if they just want one or two little jewels, I'll charge them a dollar a jewel. Or um, if they want me to bling it out, five dollars, and I'll put some jewels on the design, make it look really good. Um, it it's really iffy as to how to charge people. You don't want to overcharge them. You don't want to undercharge them. My philosophy is the economy is bad enough. Uh, we don't need to be screwing over our customers. So with that is what I do is I do $100 an hour and I tell them not to pay me until afterwards in either a cash check or credit card because I can take you know through PayPal or Square. The reason I tell them that is after that hour is over with or after the initial time that they have hired me is over with, and let's just say they hire me for an hour, I do my hour there. They're already getting about a half an hour of free time from me for setup and teardown, you know. But if all the kids aren't done and they want me to continue and I only go 45 minutes or say a half an hour over, I'm not going to charge them a full $100 for that extra time. I'm only going to charge them how much I actually worked. 
So prorating it, it would be $50. If I went 45 minutes, it'd be $75. If I went 15 minutes, it'd be $25. You know, work with your customers. Don't let them take advantage of you, but don't take advantage of them either if you want to keep repeat business. Um, that's the way I do it. I know people that do 150 up to 15 kids or up to 20 kids or something like that. <coughs> And, um, you know, if they add on more, then they'll add on uh, extra fees on top of that. They'll add on for, you know, uh, extra painters if you have them. Like, my girlfriend uh, is learning face painting. She's actually doing a job with me where um, I'm only charging the $100 an hour, and I'm starting off with two hours working there. And if need be, he'll hire me for more because he's paying in cash. Uh, she's coming with me to help um, rush this along, and also it's great practice for her too, but she's also limited to things she already knows how to do. So like tigers, Spider-Man, butterflies, uh, certain eye designs and stuff. Something quick and easy that she can do that she can practice over and over while working this job. Um, I know it sounds like you shouldn't be practicing while at a job. If I need help... I can have her do all the base coats and I do all the details. You know, they tell her what she wants and stuff. And since I'm hired for this event, I'm not going to have any displays out. I'm only going to have a limited amount of designs that they can pick from that I tell them. Spider-Man, dog, cat, monster, butterfly, uh, random eye design that I make, abstract eye design. If you limit their possibilities, they give you an answer quicker. If you give them possibilities, they can be standing there forever. Okay? So limit your possibilities of what they can do and stuff. Um, the reason I charge 5 10 and 15 is I don't want to deal with $1 bills. If I deal with $1 bills, they go into a tip bucket. Okay? I don't want to have to deal with change of $1 bills. If I keep it at 5 10 15 most of the time... I get a person that loves a $15 face painting, they'll give me a $5 tip by handing me a 20 and tell me to keep it. You know, if I have ones and stuff like that and I go to give them change, you know, like, here's $5 and ones, they may or may not give me a $1 bill or $2 bill, $2 or $3. But most of the time, if I only keep it at 5 10 15 and I show that there's no ones except for in the tip bucket, they're going to pay me a $5 tip or they're going to pull out money out of their own pocket and put it into the tip jar and stuff. Um, it makes it easier for me to uh, organize my money too and keep track of everything. Uh, I hate ones. Um, they're just bulky when you get a lot of them. So I try to stick with 5, 10, and 15 as my base set. Um, What else was I going to say? I do have my prices posted. Um, that is a good question on here. Do you have your prices posted or do they have to ask? Even if you have your prices posted, you're still going to have customers come up to you and ask you, how much is it? They can be standing looking at your signboard, which has prices big and bold on it how much is it um good example i had a miscommunication uh on the fourth of july this lady comes up and she's got ten dollar designs and she's only got five dollars i said well that was ten dollars she goes well you said you can modify it to a five dollar design i said yes but you have to let me know that i can't just automatically assume that you know you want five dollar designs out of this ten dollar one that I did a ten dollar face on your child now and you're only gonna pay me five dollars for you gotta let me know these things now I use a touch screen computer the same one that I'm you know doing this live show on uh, I use the touch smart uh, the Microsoft touch uh, surface touch program which allows the pictures to pop up and you got them at the bottom of the screen and they can pull them up and they can uh, shrink them and grow them, uh, rotate them, you know, move them around and stuff. And all my photos have prices on them. 
I still have people. They'll see a butterfly on one eye that's for $5, and it has a big white and blue $5 sign on it. And they'll still ask, how much is this one? So it doesn't matter if you have your prices posted or not. They're still going to ask you these questions because they don't want to read. That's not everybody. That's just some people don't read. Okay? Um, Melissa asks, so if you, were go, if you were to go market yourself to a restaurant, do you charge the same and how do you approach them to sell yourself to restaurants or to anyone? Um, Arla Albers is a great person to talk to. If you're friends of hers on Facebook, ask her this question. She'll, uh, I would probably say send her a personal message um, about that. Ask her that same question. She is really great about that. I can give you a gist of uh, what she said. Uh, also, Katie Hunt is a great one to ask about that. And probably also uh, Tara Isle. Uh, she'll be able to help you out with that. Um, what I do if I'm going into a restaurant, I tell them, look, let's start off with $100 a month or maybe like $100 a week. Um, I'll come in for, you know, an hour. I'll do face painting and stuff. And, you know, you pay me at the end of that day. And after a couple of months, we'll renegotiate it and we'll come up with, you know, a better price or, you know, something. And we'll try that out. Um, it's really hard to market yourself to restaurants, uh, they try to keep themselves on a budget. Most of them are corporate nowadays. It's easier if you're in a mom and pop. Um, Chick-fil-A is really great at uh, doing a kid's night, but they want it for free. They don't want to pay you for it. Um, you know, they don't want you charging parents either. So, you know, I guess Chick-fil-A is a great place to practice if you want to go because they have no problem during kid's night letting you set up. Um, they just don't want to pay you for your time and your effort. I know, I'm very, I'm not going to get into it. But um, different restaurants. I tried Mellow Mushroom. They would rather have uh, musicians than worry about the kids. Um, I tried going in with them. They, you know, people, I don't know what it is in my area, but people love their southern hospitality of saying, yeah, I'll get back to you about that. And then a couple months later, you know, you call them up. Oh, well, I meant to get back with you. Um, hello, you know, I literally had to go back into Mellow Mushroom and ask them. I said, hey, what's going on? You know, I'm, I'm waiting here. You said you would contact me in a couple of days. Oh, well, they decided not to, so we didn't even bother. How professional is that? Okay, sorry. Let me get off my rant. <laughs> so, um, another good thing is if you can get in uh, with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, if you can get in as a business in the Chamber of Commerce, get yourself listed. Um, I don't know how they do it for businesses that don't have an actual physical location. Um, get with the Chamber of Commerce and go to some of their Chamber of Commerce socials. Um, good one is in Abingdon. I went to one of their socials there. They go to different banks and they have these... Um, you know, they have these catered dinners and they have contests and you get to meet the other business owners and stuff and just talk. And that's a great way of getting in contact with all the uh, owners of the different businesses in your area uh, to where you can actually make connections and say, hey, why don't I help you out with this and that? Uh, right now in my area, I'm trying to, uh, I have a business meeting with a new owner of a gallery in my area who... Um, has some really great ideas and he's just one of uh, six artists who actually bought out this uh, gallery and they're trying to keep it the same but they got some new ideas to bring in uh, some more business into the area and I want to talk to him about how I can help him out with that with my unique art in this area that is not used to body art so we're gonna see what we can do about that um, Getting to know your business owners in your area is probably the best thing to do. 
So, uh, Parks and Recreation is okay, but they always want you for free events. Parks and Recreation don't want to pay you. All their free events they have, they want you to volunteer for. I wouldn't go with Parks and Recreation unless you're going out to a park and you're recreating by practicing face painting on the guests that are out there for free uh, because you want to. But I wouldn't get into anything like that unless you're really die hard about um, pushing yourself out there. Uh, if you can afford to give your stuff away for free, do it. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last video and I know I'm going over my time. That's fine. I don't care. Um, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but if you're going to give away your services for free, they need to be able to accommodate you with anything you need. Okay? Um, meaning, don't bring your own table. Don't bring your own chairs. Don't bring your own tent. Don't bring your own water. Don't bring anything like that. Just bring yourself and your paints. They need to supply you with everything. They need to be waiting on you hand and fist. Um, if they really want you, they'll do what they need to do to get you out there. You know? Uh, because you're not getting paid for it, you need to be compensated for it somehow. So, do you just face paint or do you offer other services as well? Um, I do do glitter tattoos. Actually, my girlfriend is doing that more for me. That's a way of um, helping her out financially. Um, I do do henna tattoos, but I don't do them that often. And the henna I do is not traditional. It's more uh, tribal, teenager kind of stuff, raver kind of stuff. It's... Um, more like doing cheek art, but with temporary uh, body stain henna. Um, I don't really offer anything else other than my face, my body painting, and the henna. Uh, I used to do hair feathers. I gave that up when Walmart started selling theirs for five bucks for a set of three that you could just clip in your hair. Um, nobody was going to pay for the feathers I had. <coughs> hair tinsel, I just don't see where that's going to make any money anymore. Um, people are doing it. Started off $5 a tinsel strand, then it went down to a dollar a tinsel strand. Now you can get three for a dollar. Um, it's probably going to go cheaper than that because people just like to undercut uh, to get money. And uh, that's it. So, uh, gone over my hour. Thank you for these questions. Um, I'll put my uh, I'll put the link to uh, my body painting uncensored page or group uh, with this. Uh, it will be converted over to YouTube so that you can watch it later. Um, just uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you for being so cordial. Uh, sorry about the rant earlier, but I needed to get that off my chest. I hope I did it as professional as I could. Um, I know in the past some of mine haven't been that way in some of my past videos. Um, trying to go a more professional route. So thank you very much for watching. And um, I guess I'll see you guys next week. 7 o'clock, same time, same channel. And uh, <laughs> Artsy, look for this in the mail. Bye.